I wanted to explore creating realistic and stylized materials in Adobe Substance Sampler. Sampler is a powerful tool used for creating textures, and unlike its bigger brother Substance Designer, Sampler is a layer-based system that can generate textures using procedural parameters or input data from photos and scans. I wanted to break down my process for creating a distressed stitched leather material from the ground up. The first thing we'll want to do is create a new project by navigating to the top left of the screen and selecting New Project. Next, we find our viewer settings docked on the left side of the screen, and here we can choose what type of mesh to preview our material on, as well as an HDRI for our lighting setup. With all of the other settings left as is, we can begin. Keep in mind Substance is non-destructive, so we can always change our project and material settings later on. Now, let's create our base material. This will be the foundation for our material. I'm going to click on this wood preset and then modify the roughness and color values until they fit something closer to leather. We're going to begin creating a few levels of detail for our leather. Generally, it's best to think of surface details in three parts, primary details, secondary details, and fine details. Let's begin by creating a surface relief layer for our primary details. Underneath the properties, you can see we have several surface presets. I'm going to select the largest smooth per lin, adjust the seed, scale, and intensity. I'm looking to achieve mild surface breakup with big shapes here. Next, we'll create another surface relief layer for our secondary details. I'm looking to create the subtle bump commonly found on most leather. Under Properties, I'll select the Mosaic preset and adjust the seed, intensity, and blur amounts. I'll continue to refine the pattern until it resembles the small surface bumps found on leather. Playing with the combination of these sliders can always change these patterns, so keep tweaking until it meets your expectations. Lastly, we'll create a third surface relief layer for our fine details. Let's select the Damaged Surface Fine preset under Properties and adjust the fine variant to white noise. Adjust the seed and intensity to dial in the microsurface detail noise. This will create small details, further enhancing the surface. Lastly, create a sharpen layer to increase the sharpness of either your base color or normal map. And tweak any surface relief layers before moving forward. Be conservative using the sharpen layer effect here, as too much can start to damage the material. Now that we've created some basic surface variations for our leather material, let's begin working on the stitching pattern. In the New Layer tab, I'll select Quilt Stitch and apply that to the top of our layer stack. You can see it's created a stitched effect on our material. In this instance, I want to create a diamond stitch pattern. Let's navigate to the Pattern Selection tab under Properties and select Diamond. Beneath that, we can toggle stitch details on and off. I'm going to leave Top Stitch and Seam on. I can adjust the Top Stitch parameters, including Amount, Offset, and Top Stitch Scale. Next, we have control over seam details, including seam type and width. I'll adjust these two stitch details until I'm satisfied with the stitch pattern. With that finished, I'll toggle on the quilt parameter, which, as you can see, has created height variations throughout the stitching. A glance at the Quilt tab reveals settings for quilt type and intensity. I'll stick with the Tense Quilt option for now, as I like the effect it's having on my leather material. 
we can adjust the stitch normal intensity anytime by toggling on the advanced parameters below. With our stitch pattern started, let's add another new layer. We'll select the channel switch layer and under properties, we'll change the input channel to height and the output channel to roughness. We'll change the blending mode to subtract and modify the opacity. This will create a roughness variation in our material based off the height position of our surface details. Very effective for selling realism on a material. And now that we have our channel switch in place, I'll continue to modify the quilt stitch layer until I'm satisfied with that final pattern. Next, let's add more surface details. Let's navigate to our layers and add a dust layer beneath the channel switch. And again, we can modify the layer by tweaking the seed, roughness, and density of the dust layer. I'll leave the color as is for now. And once finished, we can navigate to the Assets tab on the left and scroll until we find the scratch layer. We can drop that beneath the channel switch in our layer stack and adjust. With this in place, we can spend the next few minutes adjusting our layer parameters. Here I'll change the base color of our leather to get a better look at our surface details. Sometimes changing the color means seeing it in a different way and that can help see the surface details differently. Continue to tweak the quilt stitch, dust, and scratch layers until you're satisfied. And as we add more layers to our layer stack, I'll occasionally go back and make adjustments to some of our previous layers. I find changing the material base color can sometimes help improve the visibility of the surface details. Before completing our material, we have a few things left to do. Next, let's add a brightness and contrast layer to the top of our layer stack.
Lastly, we'll add our final layer to the top of the stack, the height to ambient occlusion parameter. This will create an ambient occlusion map based off of the material's height. I don't want the occlusion in the seams to look too heavy, so I'll reduce the ambient occlusion intensity until it feels just right. From here, a few last tweaks to our quilt stitch parameters and our material is finished. And now we have a cool, distressed, stitched leather material ready to be exported as texture maps for Unreal Engine, Blender, or just about any other renderer. And because we made this in substance using procedural tools, we can easily create new iterations of this material simply by changing the parameters in our layer stack. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Check out more Substance Sampler tutorials on my channel and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see ya.